Welcome everyone. I'm very excited today to be with Colin Davin. He's going to be the first performer of the U.S. International Guitar Series season 2021. How are you doing? Doing well, William. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So uh, I just wanted to remind everyone that this concert is going to be one night only, although if you purchase tickets, you'll be able to watch it for 72 hours. And um, this is not going to be posted uh, on YouTube in its entirety ever. And this is a chance to see Colin in his own home and performing amazing works. And also the masterclass will um, only be available to those that either purchase season tickets or uh, individual tickets. And I wanted to urge you to come and see this event. It's gonna be a phenomenal, both events are gonna be phenomenal. And this supports, him as an artist and keeps our organization going. Uh, so I just wanted to urge you to come. It's going to be a great time. I'm looking so forward to it. And thank you for being with me today, Colin, and having this interview. And I'm looking forward to hearing you perform and, um, and, and see the master class this weekend. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it as well. So let's first talk a little bit about the program. Actually, we had um, you in the Portland series back in 2014, and the audience just thoroughly enjoyed it. And you played Bach, which was phenomenal. And I noticed you're going to be playing some Bach. Today. So let, let's talk a little bit about that particular piece. And um, which uh, is that your transcription? It is. Yeah, I generally... Um, I play a couple of the solo violin pieces, and in the case of this concert, I'll be playing the uh, final cello suite, cello suite number six. Uh, and with all those pieces, I pretty much uh, work mostly from uh, the original instrument score. Um, so sometimes referencing manuscripts, sometimes referencing one of the uh, kind of standard issue uh, uh, catalog editions. Um, and so, I, I actually don't have any of my arrangements written out. Uh, they're all just kind of, there's some pencil scratch on uh, original cello scores, and then a lot of crazy ideas that just got stuck up there. So. Great. And where are you going to be performing from? Uh, from the other room uh -huh. uh, in my house, yeah. Right. So, uh, so right now I'm in my little office studio, uh, and I'll be in the... Uh, kind of in the in the breach between my dining room and my living room so excellent and so um talk about a couple of the other uh, pieces on the program sure uh i'll open the program with a piece called adoration uh by uh, the american composer florence price uh who was the first uh african-american woman to be uh programmed by a major american orchestra she had her music uh, performed by the Chicago Symphony. Um, and this is a piece that was, it's a short piece originally for organ, about three minutes long, uh, very uh, beautiful and hymn-like, and uh, uh, was arranged by a former student, actually, uh, Mariam haji uh, who studied with uh, me and with Jason Vio at CIM uh, and graduated a few years ago and, and is uh, doing great work putting together a lot of cool arrangements these days. Excellent. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that'll open the program. Uh, and then Leo Brower's uh, Sonata del Caminante comes next. Uh, really, really exciting virtuosic work um, that he wrote for uh, Sergio Assad. Uh, and actually this piece was a, a piece that kind of got me through a bit of a tough time in the, in the early days of the pandemic. Uh, I hit a real, I think like a lot of people um, kind of uh, existential wall and was feeling really unmotivated actually to, I was still getting the guitar out every day, but I, I really felt like I was just going through the motions and, and uh, waiting for, waiting for something to happen. And it didn't seem like anything was ever going to happen. And uh, so I was just kind of reading through some music and uh, picked up this score and something, it just kind of clicked back on, you know, and the, the spark was relit. So uh, this will actually mark my my first uh, public performance of the, of that piece. Wow. Um, uh, so so a really important piece to me this past year, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that'll be the first half. And then uh, preceding the Bach will be a uh, Joan Towers Clocks, mm -hmm. uh, which is a work that I uh, originally learned uh, for a gig uh, for her 
her birthday party concert oh. uh, that was in uh, in New York at Merkin Concert Hall, and um, and so I had I was lucky enough I got to work with Joan and study the piece, and uh, at the time I I was either still studying at Juilliard or just recently uh, finished studying at Juilliard with Sharon Isbin, and the piece was written for Sharon, uh, so so there's a nice connection of you know a piece written for my teacher and then I was bringing it. Uh, to Joan for her for her birthday, um, and it's a really cool piece, really difficult, um, uh, but has some really amazing sounds in it. Excellent. So I've noticed that you taught um, at several places. Right now, you're at the Cleveland Institute of Music with Jason Vio, and you guys are the, both uh, heading up the guitar department there. Yeah. That's excellent. So, how has the pandemic kind of affected? Um, your style of teaching. I mean, I'm obviously you probably have to <laughs> use technology to kind of get it across. Sure. Can you talk a little bit about that? For sure. I mean, uh, we're we're lucky enough at CIM to be teaching mostly in person. Um, sure. A lot of the classroom stuff is happening uh, remotely, but private lessons and small ensembles um, are happening primarily in, in person. Um, and uh, we're a we're a small community. There's fewer than 400 students, and there's one building and one dorm. Uh, so so far, we've been able to manage and and stay in person and do so uh, pretty safely. Um, so that's been that's been nice. Uh, the only adjustment is talking through a mask, which is not such a big deal. Um, but certainly, I've I've been doing you know a lot more uh, teaching over Zoom, uh, figuring out. Uh, audio technology to uh, sort of make the lessons sound pretty good, uh, finding different ways to communicate across the, the digital uh, divide there. Um, but it's been really good. I think I've, you know, using, um, using screen share functions to kind of annotate scores and uh, uh, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's made me think of new ways to communicate uh, in general, and to communicate musical ideas. Um, so I think it's, yeah, it's kind of sharpened me a little bit. Excellent. I'm looking forward to the master class you're going to be teaching on Saturday. Yeah. And that will be right here on Zoom. So uh, that will be available for everyone that wants to view that. It's just going to be excellent to, to get your knowledge. You've um, studied with some amazing people like Sharon has been at Juilliard. And, um, what, what are some of your other instructors that you've studied with? I know that, um, I think you mentioned uh, in the past that you studied with John Holmquist, who just passed away. Yeah, actually, I, I never studied with John, um, but he was he was teaching at CIM when I uh, showed up as a prep student. Right, right. Um, yeah, so uh, from my, my days in uh, the CIM prep program, I studied with uh, Tom Poor, uh, and then later uh, with Jason Fio. Uh, and then my undergrad was at USC, uh, and I studied with Bill Kanengeiser there. Um, uh, though at USC, it was nice. We got to kind of work with everyone in some capacity. Uh, so I'd have a performance class or ensemble or, uh, uh, you know, we learned kind of arranging for guitar and things like that. Um, so I got to work with Scott and Brian and uh, the late Jim Smith as well. Uh, and then we had regular visits from Pepe Romero, of course. Uh, so, so I got to, to study a bit with him as well. Um, yeah. And then, as you mentioned, Sharon has been, uh, for my master's degree at Juilliard. Excellent. Yeah. And I've noticed you perform in some amazing halls like Carnegie Hall mm -hmm. and some different places across the world. So how, um, basically how has the pandemic, um, affected you like kind of in your professional career as, as far as performing? Um, has it been difficult because, you know, the concert series, I mean, the concert season has pretty much been on hold, at least a live concert. So how has that affected you? Yeah, I, um, well, my, my summer, uh, was, was going to be one of the most exciting performing summers I I'd, I'd ever had. I was going to be, uh, on something of a world tour, uh, with concerts in, uh, New Zealand, Australia, Vietnam, Thailand. Uh, I was talking with, with a, a venue in Dubai, uh, South Africa, um, potentially Germany, Wales. Uh, so, you know, I had this and I was just continuously going to be gone. I think it was going to be about a two month tour. Um, 
and uh, and you know it was just one of those crazy ideas. I I had a uh, I was invited to play at a festival in Perth, Western Australia, mm-hmm. and then uh, my duo with a harpist, Emily Levine, uh, we were invited to play at the World Harp Congress in uh, Cardiff, Wales. And I said, well, I'm going to be in Australia and I'm going to be in Wales. So let's fill in all the space between. Uh, so I just started thinking of every possible place where I might have had a connection and uh, and managed to put together this kind of whirlwinds tour. And of course, none of it happened. Um, so so my summer, <laughs> my summer was spent kind of like, all right, well, um, I don't know, let's let's grow a garden. So, you know, my partner, my partner and I, we we kind of. Uh, planted a nice garden and we we ate very well and we sat outside every day and um uh so we you know we we we, we had a nice summer of quite a lot different than what i expected and i had one live performance though uh in person with a real audience uh in august uh that was at uh lakeside chautauqua in ohio which is kind of a a, a spin-off campus of the Chautauqua Institution in uh, upstate New York. Okay. And I had played a concerto with the uh, symphony at Lakeside a couple of, couple of summers ago. And uh, they still had, you know, summer vacationers who were coming in and renting their, renting their cottages and, uh, and wanted something to do. So they had a socially, it was outdoors. Sure. Uh, I played under a gazebo with Lake Erie right behind me. It was a perfect evening, mild temperatures, you know, so beautiful sunset. Uh, it rained for about 20 seconds. Uh, and everyone, the, the whole audience cleared out and hid under trees and then it stopped raining. And they all kind of tiptoed back. I just kept playing, you know, but um, so that was, that was a really uh, special uh, performance. You know, I, I, you, uh, you don't realize how much uh, you're going to miss something until it's gone. And, uh, and so that was, that was really great to be back to it. Um, but otherwise it's been all virtual. Um, you know, I've, I've had a few uh, collaborations during this time that have happened over kind of uh, video conference or sending videos back and forth and recording one part. And then the other person records on top of that. And you kind of stitch together a little composite video um, I actually just started uh, playing in a band this way uh, with a, a cellist in Arizona and a singer songwriter in Alaska, wow. uh, and I'm in Cleveland. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're we're across three different time zones and uh, you know a few thousand miles apart, but um, but we're making music together. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I I drove down to Texas in October to record a concert uh, with with my aforementioned harp duo partner, uh, Emily Levine, uh, for a series down that she uh, artistic directs down there and uh, heading up to Wisconsin in a couple of weeks to record with my soprano, uh, Esteli Gomez, um, uh, for a concert series in Oregon. So, you know, it's one of those things that we, we uh, you know, we don't get to be in the places where it happens, but, um, you know, with a, a little bit of... Uh, extra safety measures and the willingness to take a road trip. Uh, I can go and kind of, you know, be in residence in Wisconsin for a bit and record a concert. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to urge you to come. It's going to be a great time. I'm looking so forward to it. And thank you for being with me today, Colin, and having this interview. And I'm looking forward to hearing you perform and see the master class this weekend. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it as well. Thanks. I'll see you all there. Bye.